Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today I'm gonna be making the left forearm and arm blade of the Doom Slayer from Doom Eternal complete with two detachable arm blades and easy to make but sick looking details that you can do using simple tools at home. So without further delay, let's do some cosplaying! We start by sorting out the pattern pieces that need to be and can be joined. I join them with clear tape as it's transparent and can easily be cut off. After joining them, I trim off the excess tape and now we're left with one solid piece of pattern that can be traced. I do this for quite a few more pieces that is as it reduces the number of patterns that I need to trace and it gives me bigger pieces to cut. It's easier like this when I'm working on foam. After cutting them, I run them through a flat straight surface that, as it straightens them out. Then we're on to tracing. I'm using 7mm EVA foam for this cosplay that I found locally in my area. Place, I'm using silver point to refill because there is visible on the black surface of the foam and thus it makes it easier for me to cut it. I'm using the anti cutter to cut the foam uh, at a 90 degree angle but the blade I'm using is not the one comes with the anti cutter. It's a special 30 degree angle blade that you can find in bookstores and hobby shops but you have to buy it separately. They're rather easier and uh, cheaper to find and they work just like the precision cutters uh, professional cutters use. But it's a very useful tool for the beginner and that's why I'm using it. Uh, after that I coat the sides of the piece with, EV, yeah, with contact cement and uh, remember contact cement needs to be dried for a minute or two before it can be stuck together and both of the sides that are to be stuck together need to be coated with an EDV layer of contact cement. Some pieces overlap on each other uh, but the extra pieces are very hard to find and small so I don't actually use them, I just draw them on and because uh, it's, it just overlaps or just goes down, I just push some of the pieces down and super glue them on and, and if the protruding pieces on the inside is a problem then you can just, uh, you can just cut it off with the anti cutter or any kind of blade you're using and it's just stays like there and after you send it off it's just like it's never there. After I finished assembling the forearm, the forearm turned out to be much more larger than my hand is and there are a lot of uh, missing pieces but it's not actually oversized, it's uh, much more thicker than my hand because Doomguy has such a bulgy, muscly hand but I can fix that, I make a forearm structure in our EVA foam that fits my hand perfectly and then I stick it inside and super glue it in place so that the forearm fits snugly around my forearm and I can move around and the forearm will move around with, my, with the articulation of my head. And that's how I actually made this very loose forearm into a tight fit. 
With the forearm finished, I move on to the detail pieces of the forearm and the forearm has two kinds of details. One is a conical shape. So with the conical shape, I use a 2mm white foam because it's easier to see on there. Uh, and as you can see, the silver for a point refill is just as visible on this surface as it was in the black surface. So after cutting it off, I apply super glue on them and rub it off because it's much more quicker than contact cement and be sure uh, to line them up perfectly in the line so that it doesn't protrude or uh, turn into a wavy piece. Okay, it needs to be very straight and it needs to be tempered properly. After I did that, uh, some pieces, some little chunks of it was protruding out, so I cut them off and turned it into a straight line, a straight piece, and then I glued it on um, another piece of 2mm foam and just kept it like that. I, you can use, uh, you can blow it so that it dries quickly because super glue, glue uh, actually sets very quickly and when you blow on it, it sweats uh, very quicker. And after that, I just leave it off for a few minutes so that the glue can set. So now we move on to the rounder shapes. That that is the second piece, the second kind of shapes you can find on the uh, forearm. These are kind of balls that I can I can uh, make out. So to make these, I use the same kind of seven millimeter foam again, but I cut them out with a um, hollowed out marker pen, and that's just how it they came up. Uh, so these are round, and I need about nine of them. So here they are. After uh, making, the, uh, making them, I just glued them on, I just traced them on uh, where I'm going to glue them and after that I just uh, did what I just felt like doing and I just drew the places and I just uh, put them on there so that they, are, so they fit snugly over there. And now it's, uh, after the glue has set, I can just take out the conical shape and cut off the excess and trim off the excess pieces and make it on, on make it a straight cut line using my Dremel. And as it as it turned out straight, I just made five more, just like that. And it's time to trace them on their places and put glue them on their places. Don't forget to rock on the Doom Heavy Metal while you're building this. And remember we had a hollow piece over there that I thought I was going to tend to later. And now is the time I just uh, cut off a random rectangular piece and then just glue it on there because it just sits just, just like that. And uh, that's it. That's how the forearm is done. With the arm done, now it's time for the arm blade. Uh, I have all the pieces cut out beforehand. And now it's time to glue them. I just glue them just same, just the same way I glued the arm pieces with contact cement on both sides so that they can stick properly. I use a leftover foam for this, uh, for sticking the glue, and it just. You can use whatever, you can use a brush, you can use a foam piece, you can use any kind of thing you want. And as I'm going through the crafting process, you can see there are some pieces over there and some overlappings. Make sure to do those when you're following to the Kura. So as all the pieces are 
moving on I just trim off some access pieces that I deem is useless and I can just glue them on as I want as some glue dries And after some joining and everything, we have the framework for the arm blade finished. After finishing the housing for the blade, I, may, I proceed on making the blade. This is uh, what I'm using is a plastic board. It's a 5mm plastic board and it can be uh, cut open with an uh, anti cutter but I used uh, a Dremel and uh, you can see that I traced it on with a pen first but then I used a marker pen uh, with a thick marker because when you cut it open uh, with a Dremel uh, a lot of material gets uh, drilled off so uh, to keep my material uh, intact to do the length and width that I want I drew some access lines with the Dremel, with the marker pen and I dremeled on the access lines so that the access lines would get uh, sawed off and I'd get the perfect shape that I was wanting. Uh, don't forget to let your dremel cool off for a bit because it's very, it gets very warm and when the dremel is on your lap it's very, it, it gets very uncomfortable that time. So after I finished off with the cutting with the Dremel bit, I just sand, I just start sanding the uh, blade for uh, added safety because it's if it's not uh, rounded off and it may be sharp because it is plastic and it is a very hard plastic. You can actually uh, pierce uh, paper with it, and uh, if you if you're careless enough in and lays it on your skin, it may leave a bruise. So I don't want that. So I just sand it down and make it uh, uh, make it blunt, as blunt as I can, uh, without making it uh, feel like a wimpy blade. Okay, so I uh, trim off a piece uh, with a straight piece that I want to uh, put inside the casing, blade casing. Okay, so uh, it, as you can see, it just, it's just this not big enough, not long enough. So I trace it on another piece of uh, plastic, leftover plastic that I had and I'm gonna cut it off open with the anti-cutter to show you that it can be cut with an anti-cutter but it takes time and much more effort so using a Dremel is much more smarter. Okay, so use a Dremel. Okay, so to glue them on I'm gonna use super glue because uh, that's just how it is. Um, I'm adding extra paper layers of uh, reinforcements because uh, that way uh, it won't get any kind of thicker but the uh, super glue hardens the paper uh, into a plasticky form so it turns into a little form of plastic uh, without the blade breaking off. Okay, so uh, to uh, we have the accent pieces of the blades uh, added, adding uh, on the blade. So I add them on, and uh, I just keep adding them on. That's the blade accent pieces and detail pieces. You can see there are about five of them going all all around the blade. So just I just go through it. So as you can see I'm using super glue here because it's much more quicker and it works better on plastic. Plastic works better with super glue but uh, not, not contact cement. Uh, it works just as fine but not as good as plastic. Okay so I made a smaller piece with foam and a smaller, a bigger piece with plastic so that it stays sturdy. 
Okay, so uh, to add the pieces on the forearm at the housing, and, and to add the housing on the forearm, I just send off the place that I'm gonna attach the piece and send off in both sides. Both sides that I'm gonna attach so that it gives more area and more rugged, rugged surface for the glue to stick. And after the glue is set, I just add them on. And to reinforce the join, I apply a little bit of super glue and just graze them on there so that it cannot be seen. And as you can see now, I've done it. If you like this video, like and subscribe on my channel and thank you very much.